Okay, this is about graphing trig. So in order to be able to graph that someday, you need to start with something. And of course, we're going to start with what it all started with, which is sine. It all boils down to sine graph. It's kind of easy to, you know, even cosine is really just sine. And tangent, which is which over which? Sine over cosine. Even tangent, which is sine over cosine, really is just sine again. Because even cosine was just sine except shifted. So it's all about this wave. And so I want you to memorize this one first. It goes on forever. Feel free to continue until you don't have room. But it goes on forever. It starts at zero. And it goes up. And then what do you think is the highest it ever goes to? What's the highest answer you've ever had for a sine from those, any of those sine of pi over 2, sine of, yeah, 1 was the highest it ever went to. Okay, and what do you think the lowest that sine ever goes to is? Negative 1. So it just oscillates. Do you know that word? Oscillates, kind of goes back and forth between 1 and negative 1. It just keeps going forever. And now this kind of blew me away the first time I saw it. It's like, why are you putting radians or why are you putting, like, pies on this thing? That's because if you're going to graph two things, you know, sine needs an angle, right? If we're going to graph y equals sine of something, it's, I told you, S-I-N all by itself doesn't mean anything. But sine of an angle, like sine of 30 or sine of 45, that can mean something. So we just say sine of x. And x is the angle, and the angle could be anything. And usually we do it in radians. I told you that we're going to kind of move away from degrees. You're going to mostly be using radians. All right, phones away, please. So this 2 pi, oh, wait, I'm wrong. It's not there. Sorry. Actually, it is there. OK, sorry. There we go. That 2 pi is right there. I'm just going to graph one cycle where it starts at zero and then ends at zero it's not called a cycle it's called a period that is one period of sine you're learning so much stuff right now you have learned the domain and the range of sine domain means this way and will it ever stop yo i don't know because I haven't actually been to infinity way to the left or way to the right. Yes, I was coding vanilla ice there for just a brief moment. Um, but this will go forever in both directions. It the, the wave just continues forever. So the domain is all reals. As in, you can stick in any angle you want in here and sign. you can do sign of that. Sign of 45, sign of 150, sign of 360. We can do start doing zoom radians. That's the same as sine of 2 pi. We could say sine of infinity. No, not really. But you can go any angle you can name, you can do sine of it. So the domain is goes forever. How about the range? I like doing the range by looking at the picture. What's the highest it ever goes to? What's the lowest it ever goes to? Negative one. So you know the domain and the range of sine, don't you? Domain is that it can go forever. So all reals. Negative infinity, positive infinity. The range of sine is from one to negative one. Yes. Good question. If it's two sine, remember that the sine itself can be one. So if I change, if I want to find two sine, the highest sine can be is one, then the highest two sine can be would be two times one, so two. So yeah, if you want to throw a two in front, the graph can go higher than it used to go because it gets doubled. So take a guess what sine two sine x looks like. Can you picture that? Your head you picture it going up twice as high and twice as low and it just keeps on going all right and yeah we're going to do all kinds of stretches and moves and shifts and even reflections uh so yeah there's all kinds of stuff we can do to the graphs because you're right we're not just going to graph sign by the time we're done that'll be the first thing we probably will do is like a throw a two in front then we'll try probably throw a three in there and then we might start talking about shifting it by like minus two. Well, that the whole graph just has to, the whole thing, the whole wave has to move down to that kind of stuff. All right. But you need to know the parent ones first. That's sine. And 
if there was any spots that were important besides where it ends, which is at 2 pi, it would be the other spots along the way that are here, here, and here. Okay, so think about it. Isn't this halfway through its cycle? So then that's halfway to 2 pi, so what do you think it is? Pi makes sense to you? All right, and what about this from here to here? If that's pi, then what's this that's part way there? Pi over 2. So pi over 2, pi. 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those are the big spots. And this is 0, but it kind of is assumed that it's 0, but you can label it if you want to. Yes? Kind of like circle It is. Yes, this is exactly circle trig, except stretched out in a horizontal way. Exactly, because like, I hope you're thinking about here's pi over 2, and here's pi, and here's 3 pi over 2, and here is 2 pi. It's just kind of like unrolling out those same things, except in a horizontal way. I'm glad you saw that. That's good. Okay, so that's the sine graph. If you were going to memorize only one of them, that would be the one. Because cosine is exactly the same except shifted. Okay, so you just grab it and shift it. And the way you shift it is so that the hump here that hit at 1 used to be at pi over 2. This, this spot at the top of the little uh, snake I'm moving here goes over here, and now you got cosine. But I'm going to draw you a nice one on the next graph. So cosine starts at 1 then, and it goes down. Now this one's always harder for me to draw for some reason. But if you do it in like little parts, like, okay, it goes down until it hits. And then it goes until it gets to the lowest spot it ever goes to. And then it's going to go up and hit this line again. And then the last spot is it's going to kind of top out and reach the highest it goes to. There's cosine. So sine, cosine, I'm going to tell you about tangent too, just because, you know, why not know all three of them? But sine, cosine, and tangent parent graphs are the key for today. That's 2 pi. That's halfway to 2 pi, which would be what? Pi. And this is halfway to there. I didn't draw it perfectly, but this spot should be exactly in the middle of these two, so it's half of that. So it's pi over 2. And if you want to, the, the hardest spot to remember is this spot here. Think of us counting it up from 1 pi over 2 to 2 pi over 2. It's the same as pi, right? And then this one must be 3 pi over 2. Or you can think about the whole unrolling the circle trig one. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so there's cosine. Without even telling you, I bet you know this answer. What's the range of cosine? I'll say 1 to 1 because negative 1 to 1. You always say it from lowest to highest, right? So from negative 1 to 1. What's the domain of cosine? Does it ever stop? No. It goes forever in both directions. So the domain is all real. All right. And then last but not least, we have tangent. What was tangent again? Tangent is really not its own thing. It's two other things. It's sine over cosine. So if you took the sine graph, which looked like that, and then you took the cosine graph, which this is tough to do. Looks like that. And you take the one divided by the other. You could recreate tangent. But it's probably a lot simpler for me to just draw a tangent for you so you can see the big picture of what it's going to look like. Tangent goes like this and has asymptotes like this. And it repeats, but it has to stop and then start over again 
and repeat over here. And then it stops and then it starts over again and repeats over here. Get the idea? It just keeps on repeating over and over and over again. But it's got walls. It's got these asymptote lines. And I want you to think about this. Since tangent is sine over cosine, it's because at that moment, cosine, cosine hits zero. So think about it. If it's sine over cosine, do you get at the moment that cosine hits zero, then you got sine divided by zero, which can't exist? That's why there's asymptotes there. Okay, so this is what tangent looks like, and this is that first important spot on the road. It's pi over 2. At pi over 2 is where cosine is 0. I'll remind you in the circle graph picture of that, here's pi over 2. Remember at that kind, you couldn't make a triangle? And so we'd say, oh, what point is this? This point is at 0, 1. And what's the tangent? Wait a minute, no, no. Wait, I'm talking about the cosine, sorry. What's the cosine of pi over 2? Cosine is the x. It's 0. That's why this spot for tangent can't exist because cosine is 0. This all will pull together and make sense at the end. But for right now, do you get this one's not a wave like the other ones? This guy's got asymptotes on both sides. of it. And what's, what's important to remember on this one is, it, is that it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Why is it negative? Because that's 0, 0 right here. And so when you go to the left of that, that's negative. And then tangent starts over again. It's not like you can't keep going, but if you think about it, are there places where tangent won't work? Yeah. Do you remember doing circle trig too? Sometimes we go tangent of like what? Pi over 2. Tangent of pi over 2, it wouldn't work. Why? Because there's an asymptote there. All right, so that means if there's a places that tangent won't work, what's the domain of tangent? Well, not everything works, right? It's not all reals. At least know that much. It works everywhere except where it's got asymptotes. Okay, and then how about the range of tangent? Think about that. How low does it go? How high does it go? What's the range of tangent? Negative infinity to positive infinity. All right. Good. And that was y equals tangent x. Now, that's the basics. There's going to be more. I'm going to pause for a second here while I look for what your assignment is. So, Still to come, you're going to be le learning something called amplitude. Uh, and we talked about period briefly, um, but that's one of the things where I could ask you, here's an equation. What's its amplitude and what's its period? And it's been stretched. Do you remember how on the inside it does the opposite of what you would think? All that stuff starts to happen. All right. So let's get to the homework area of this and yeah eventually tomorrow i'll be teaching you what cosecant and cotangent and all those things look like <laughs> there's a reason for that which you will find out later okay uh and this is where they start getting intense even on day two all right so here is our homework area in the required zone here on uh, we have day ones. Looking at it, thinking I haven't taught you enough quite yet to do these, but I will be teaching you more in a moment. But the one I'm gonna, the ones I'm gonna assign here, will be uh, this whole first page. I think they're all very doable. Uh, it's gonna ask you about A, B, C, and D, and again, I'll explain that in a minute. And I'd like you to do page one. And two, these are going to be shifted a little bit. And I think that's enough. We don't need to get into the, those. Uh, those are a little too complicated for us. But we're going to do the first two pages, those six questions.
Okay, that's what your homework's going to be for tonight. So let's, let's see more about what I got to teach you. I got to teach you what to do when you stretch it in front. When we stretch it in the middle, when we put a negative on it, I got to teach you what to, what happens then. And it keeps asking for A, B, C, and D. I got to tell you what those are. And I got to uh, teach you how to shift it to the right or left. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so let's actually uh, teach you this stuff by actually doing some of them with you. So let's actually just get into your homework here and look at this one that says y equals 3 sine theta. Let's just do that one together. Okay, well, some of the parts, I hope you know what sine looks like just right off the bat. And by now, I hope you're remembering it's a wave and it goes up and down. Now, I get that this is this graph um, the paper that we have in here for you is kind of strange in that you've got lots of little lines that you can pick from. Okay, so here's what I would do is let's label it ahead of time with what we want it to be. Okay, let's make this right there be one. That's where normal, like two dashes, that's where our one is going to be. Otherwise, our sign is going to be so flat and squished, it's not going to look right. And then let's make this negative one. And then we do need to know where those important spots are. And let's just keep with the even theme. Let's say that this is pi over 2. This is twice that much, so that's pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. That spot right there is 2 pi. Go every other line. You with me so far? Those spots are the ones that we look at really close when we're grading this. Is those, the, how high and low it went, and those four major stopping points along the way. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. They're right off of this. If you forget them, kind of go back to thinking about circuitry. All right, so then start at zero, zero, and go up here, and then back down, and then go down here. I like to do it in little, four little chunks. I think you'll find that that's easier than trying to make one continuous wave with your pencil. If you make it in four little parts, it kind of works the nicest. All right, now that's normal sign, and that honestly is how you're going to start every problem. You start by graphing the normal function first, and then we stretch it or flip it or shrink it or whatever. All right. Now, this part, everybody should write at the top of your paper. Y equals A sine of B times X minus C plus D. Those are all the places that we could mess with this function. We could stretch it. We could put something on the inside here. This is considered the inside. We could move it up or down by putting something on the outside. And we could go in there and we could shift it right or left. All right. So A would be a vertical stretch. Do we have one of those in our problem? Yes, we do. So therefore, what is A? 3. B would be something on the inside here. Do you see anything in there? Now, that does that mean that B is not existent? No, it just means B is 1. Because there is a stretch factor of 1, which really means it isn't stretching, but that's okay. Okay, the next one is in here also, that we're at the C part now, did we move it to the right or left? No. So think about that. If we moved it 0, do you get that the shift would be 0? Okay, that's different than the 1 thing, because we did not shift it, so it's a 0. And last but not least, the D is, did we move the thing up or down? Is there anything on the outside of this function? 
No. And so what do I put for that? Zero or one? Is there, there's no number that we moved it by. You could say it's plus zero at the end. So it's a zero. Okay, next. The amplitude, the amplitude, I haven't taught, told you this yet, but now you're learning it, is from the center line, how far up or down it will go. Common mistake answer is the amplitude is two because, you know, like it goes two from here to here. That's not the question. The question is from the middle up or from the middle down, how far does it go? Now, a normal sign has an amplitude of one. But since we stretched it with a factor of three, do you get, I'm going to, I have the choice of either making you draw this and it even goes off the scale, or we do something much nicer. We say, you can just change. We picked anything we wanted for this, this spot, right? So we can just change that from a 1 to a 3. And from a negative 1 to a negative 3. So now, I ask you, since amplitude is from the middle line up, or from the middle line down, what is the amplitude of our current problem? It's three. It's as simple as whatever number's in front of it. If there was a one there, or no number at all, which would default to a one there, then it would have an amplitude of one. Since I stretched it with a factor of three, the amplitude is three. All right, the period is when does this thing finish up? Did you notice I never changed that? It's because I never stretched it, because there was nothing inside. So what is the period of this function? 2 pi. The standard, unless it gets stretched, is it takes 2 pi to finish one cycle. And that makes sense from the circle trig thing too, right? It goes all the way around once. And the last two here, horizontal and vertical shifts, are kind of boring because did we do anything in there to move it to the right or left? Did we do anything on the outside to move it up or down? Then the answer is there was no horizontal or vertical shift. Okay, so here's the process. You start by graphing the parent one. Then you just look for, did I do any stretches or anything? And then this one, I will, after I finish graphing the parent one, I will say, okay, I'm going to have to change something because I stretched it on the inside. To do this one, you need to graph the parent one in the first place. So let's do the same deal where we start here and here, and every two marks will make our four major spots. Graph original sign right there. And this time, the amplitude, I think you should be able to answer A, B, C, and D. Like, only one of these changed from normal. A, B, C, and D. You can compare with the one above it if you want to. All right, I'm going to pause for a second while you try to graph the parent, original one. Don't try to change this three here. We'll do that together in a second. Okay, so let's make this quick. I'm going to graph the parent function. I'm actually pause while you... Okay, so this goes from one to negative one. But does it really? Yeah, it does really, because this number in front was just a one. So our amplitude was one. If I were to write this out... I'm going to write a 1 every place in the right spot. 1 sine of, oop, that's a 3, times x plus 0. I didn't shift it at all. And then I could say plus 0. Do you get all I did is rewrite the same thing I had, except throw in 1s and zeros in the appropriate spots? That tells me what A, B, C, and D should have been. You know what I'm saying? So B was 3, C is 0, and D is 0. Our horizontal shift was 0, vertical shift was 0. This period, did this period change? Yes, it did. It normally would have been 2 pi right here, but this is important. This is a big but, so to speak. This 3 has to be factored in there. Now, do you think that I should multiply that 2 pi by 3 or divide that 2 pi by 3? What's your gut say? Divide. Why are you thinking that it's that way? Why are you going to do the opposite of... It's times by 3. Why are you going to do the opposite of that? 
The right answer is not that graphs are stupid. How about the inside? Tell me about the inside. Exactly. The things that are on the inside do the opposite of what you would think. So we are going to divide by 3. But here's the kind of cool thing. If you knew this was pi, and this was pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2, then you could, let me think this through, instead of timesing everything by 3, times everything by 1 third. times 1 third, and times 1 third. So I know that got messy, but this one is en ends up being one, pi over 2 times 1 third is pi over 6. This spot was pi, and you times it by 1 third, it's pi over 3. This spot was 2 pi over 3. It's really messy, hard to read. No, sorry, 3 pi over 2, and you times by 1 third, makes 3 pi over 6. And lastly, this spot right here, which was 2 pi, has now been times by 1 third, and it's now 2 pi over 3. That spot's the most important one, the last one, because it tells you what the new period is. You know, it used to finish up at 2 pi. Now it finishes up at 2 pi over 3. All right. I think I'm going to lose the audio here any minute looking at the uh, it, the color on this fades from red when it's totally healthy. Uh, and now it's like a purple color. No, wait, it's green. Green when it's totally healthy and red when it's totally dead. And now it's purple, so it's about to die. So before it dies, I want to wrap up. So this one, if I were you, I'd start by writing it out and say, okay, negative 2 must have been... Uh, the number in the front, and that's going to affect the amplitude. It's going to go twice as high as it used to. That's also going to do something cool. It's going to flip the function. And then I'm going to say cosine of 1x plus 0 plus 0. I know it's crazy looking, but that tells me A, B, C, and D. It's like it got shifted zero at the end and shifted another zero at the end. It got stretched. There was no stretch in the inside, so there was just a one in there. And see, the only thing that really got affected here is the amplitude. So basically, you're going to graph normal cosine, and then you are going to stretch that puppy and make the numbers, that the high and low spots, they aren't going to be a one anymore. They're going to be twice as high. How about the negative thing? Can you picture if I did negative on this one, it would flip it the other way? See what I mean? A negative on it makes it flip the other way. So if your normal cosine graph looked kind of like this, then when you do the negative to it, it flips it the other way. All right. I'm realizing this assignment is a little bit too long. I'm going to cut it down from 1 to 6 to 1 through 5. I'm just going to cut off that last one. You may skip the last one. Okay, so just do one through five. And I've given you some help, and that's all I got for you for today.